morning everybody it's another day what is it today wednesday it's wednesday we're here we're hooked up to a roll tight we're taking this to toulon i had to quickly see the shop this morning because uh this brace onto there was loose so they had to tighten that up real quick got that all fixed up we'll be on the way gonna be a good day you want to know why because it's snowing so we have to say it's gonna be a good day we have to make it one because it's not gonna do it on its own let's get rolling I want to remind you guys the truck world is coming and I'm gonna be there I'm gonna be at booth 20 I'd love it if you guys could make it I'm gonna be repeating this a little bit throughout the next two weeks or so if you've already heard that I apologize I don't need to repeat myself to you but it's for the new viewers coming in I want everybody to be able to hear and have the opportunity to be there truck world is happening in Toronto Ontario at the International Center it's near the Toronto Airport it's gonna be a lot of fun it's a big truck exhibition it's Canada's meeting place for the trucking industry you can go to truckworld.ca check it all out and you can register for free admission using my promo code TWJOSH. It's like Truck World TWJOSH. You can get in for free. I hope to see you there. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm coming all the way to Ontario, okay? I'm coming all the way to Ontario from Manitoba. It'd be really cool if I got to meet you. As many of you as I can that live in the, in the area down there, or if you come from a little further away, I'd love to meet as many of you as possible. I have to release the trailer brakes too. That always helps. I wonder why is it not going? Trailer brakes. <laughs> also helps if you connect the airlines. Got here. Don't need to have this truck running. Uh, got the trailer all loosened up, ready to go. Just gonna hop in here right now, roll it back. -ah! Empty. I'm gonna put you guys right here, okay? Hold on, don't fall. Hate to see you hurt yourself. That's what it looks like when it's uh, open and ready to be loaded. You can also slide this whole piece right to the front. You can roll up that back curtain and it slides to the front and slides back and forth. So if we need to load this back section, that's easy. Just slide it forward. And when you button it all up, it's almost like pulling a dry van trailer. Almost, not quite. You still gotta tie your freight down as if it was an open deck. This is just called a rolling tarp. This saves you the trouble of tarping a load. It's much easier. I really like them. They're a little bit pricey, the trailers. That's why not everybody has them. Uh, if you're not hauling freight that uh, needs to have roll tight, like the freight I pick up here, we have to have roll tights. That's why we have them. But if you don't need a roll tight, a lot of companies and a lot of places, they just opt to use tarps. It's a little bit of extra work. But you know, a good set of tarps is what? 
correct me if I'm wrong, like 1500 bucks or so. Good set of tarps, bungees, everything you need for it. This, <laughs> this is like an $80,000 trailer. <laughs> 1500 bucks or eighty thousand dollars i mean that's including the trailer itself so i'm guessing the the roll system has got to be at least forty thousand dollars thirty thousand like, correct me i have no idea but just correct me if i'm wrong i'm all parking it here i know the trailer itself is worth like 80. so uh yeah tarps are the cheaper solution but uh, it's a lot more work and they rip and tear and these are just a whole lot better and you pay for what you get so that's why it's been drilled into me and I drill it into everyone that I talk to about these trailers. I deal with these trailers a lot, uh, almost every day or most days I'm dealing with roll tights. What's been drilled into me and what I try to drill into others is you got to be careful with them. Drive like you're pulling an $80,000 trailer because you are. <laughs> be very careful with it. They are fragile. Uh, they're handy. But you got to use them right, and if you don't use them right, and you don't maintain them, they're going to fall apart, or they're going to rip, and they're very expensive to repair. So, I mean, some accidents are unavoidable, I get that, and sometimes things just get old, and you need to, main that's where maintenance comes in, you have to maintain it. Because we all know, if you don't maintain your toys, they will fall apart, and then it'll be way more expensive to fix it after they fell apart. Than if you would have just done the maintenance to prevent that. But I'm preaching to the choir here. I realize that. Uh, you guys all know this. My fender was uh, loose this morning on the driver's side. My driver's side uh, half fender. Those of you who uh, don't drive trucks, I'll just quickly give you a look. This is a half fender right here. And this was loose on there. I showed you that before, right? I probably just showed you the same thing twice. I was really worried talking to them about <laughs> fixing it because I thought they were going to take it off and replace it with a quarter fender and I don't, I don't want a quarter fender <laughs> uh, these city trucks are the oldest trucks on the fleet obviously when highway drivers they're in they're in pretty much new trucks right but uh, why have brand new trucks for city guys especially a city guy like me that likes these old trucks right you know, they come and say, hey, we should buy some new city trucks. But why? What's wrong with the old ones? It needs a couple of little updates. Get a new steering wheel. And, you know, I'm slowly cleaning it up. I am going to get it to look nice. And once I'm done with it, they'll see. They'll see. See, I see it in my mind, in my imagination, what this truck could look like. This truck has potential. And I'm going to slowly, one piece at a time, show them that potential. And one day I'm going to roll in there and they're just going to, yeah. You don't throw away a good truck like this. No, you, you just take care of it. You just polish her up, shine her up. You know, this dash could use a little bit of work. I'm not saying I'm going to go ahead and do that, but, you know, get new uh, buttons on here. The paint is peeling on here a little bit. This is all fixable. All fixable. Yeah, it's old, but these are like snap-on parts. You can just get replacement parts that's not like wood grain or whatever. You can get like a... I don't know, different colors, whatever colors you want, you know, fix that. That's easy to fix. This truck has so much potential. And I, like if it was my truck, if, if I owned it, or if I was allowed to, I, I would just put a 36 inch sleeper behind here. That's all, because I don't want to close up that wheelbase too much. I like the extended wheelbase. Uh, but, uh, nah. These old trucks, you just got to take care of them. And it's not that old either. It's a 2007. It's not that old. There are trucks running the highways right now that are from the 70s and 80s. A lot of trucks from the 90s. As long as you just keep taking care of them and keep rebuilding them when they when they need it, they'll go forever. I mean, the, with the price of trucks nowadays and the price of fuel and everything, and all of the problems that a new truck comes with, like I'm not, I'm not, I shouldn't sound like I'm throwing shade on new trucks right now. I don't, I don't want to do that. Because the new trucks are great for what they offer. But I'm a little bit old school in my brain. I I just like the way the old trucks operate better. The new trucks have a lot of fancy gizmos. It's just, in my mind, that's a lot of fancy gizmos that have the potential to break. And then it's electric problems, right? And, you know, technology is what it is. And we have to keep moving forward. It's exciting to see what new technologies... 
we're going to see like a truck world. I'm really excited to see all the new technologies coming into the industry. I think it's really cool to see what's, what they're doing. And I think we can do both. I think we can have our new technology and our new trucks over here for those people who are really into the new technologies. And we can also maintain and keep up these old trucks for those of us who like the old trucks. I think we can do both and everyone can be happy. But yeah, these, these city trucks, they're the uh, oldest ones on the fleet. So uh, if you come here and work, you'll be in a newer, uh, probably newer Peterbilt, maybe one of those Western Stars. I've showed you all the trucks, right? We have T680s, uh, Kenworths. We have a variety, Volvos whole bunch of different kinds of trucks but they're all newer and uh, nicer depends on your version of nice but uh, <laughs> for highway driving you do want a comfortable reliable truck and that's what we got for that this truck doesn't go too far so I like it and that's all the matter right now I like it I'm very protective over it too all right that's why because I'm cleaning it up I'm polishing it up I'm shining it up so if I'm gonna be making it look nice I want to be the one who's driving <laughs> Uh, we'll see how far I get on it this summer. Um, I want to leave it better than I found it, at least, right? I found her. She was in a little bit of a rough shape. Good truck, solid truck, but uh, she needed a facelift. I can do little things, at least, just to at least make it a little better than how I found it, right? And I enjoy doing that, so it's a, it's a good weekend for me just tinkering and... Making things better. They're still loading me back there. It's gonna be a little while. That's okay. I got all day. That was uh, a very uh, intensive load. There's quite a bit of stuff in the trailer there. Usually it's pretty easy, you know, a couple of straps, boom, boom, bang, boom, done. Not today. Today was uh, a little bit more difficult, but I like that. It challenges myself, right? You gotta keep your skills sharp.
pull in, I mean, you know, check out my logs, check out my trailer, check out my truck. Should all be good. This truck just did pass safety last month. Let's see, we watched the sign off on the right there. It says next axle. thousand six hundred kilograms on the drives it's about 20 some thousand pounds and on the tri-axle on the back only about 6800 kgs and we got the green light so we only have about like 15,000 pounds on the tri-axle on the trailer we're allowed up to 42,000 pounds and on my drives I'm allowed up to 37,500 only got about 22,000 and my steers of course are around about 11,000 pounds I'm allowed 12,000 I'm not anywhere near being overweight rain but it is a little bit of snow you can see it around the edges of my window <sighs> you know I just wish that we had like San Francisco weather but here and not in San Francisco wish we could bring their weather here but just just their weather hey and see out the window ah now it's snowing in here but I have to have it open so I can see. I don't need this one open, I'm gonna see through this one. All right, I'm gonna, huh? Oh, oh, do I go? Should I go? He's in the other lane, send it. Oh, we're gonna send it. Full send. Oh boy. That engine brake. All right, put the don't hit me lights on. There we go. Okay, that wasn't so bad, except that I missed a gear there because of my engine brake. in the trailer I mean well you saw it at the way station it's not too much but enough to smooth out the ride quite a bit you can always tell for those of you who don't drive truck you can tell when you're loaded just by the way your truck operates on the highway just by how smooth it rides the smoother the heavier <laughs> Come on, Manitoba. Why you gotta do us like that? Oh, a Porsche SUV. You know, for the person who wants to say, hey, hey, I make some good money. <laughs> and I got kids. <laughs> nice SUVs. Never actually driven one yet, but I'm pretty sure we've hauled them before for some customers. Just here in Steinbach again. We're supposed to be getting like three to five inches of snow tonight yet is what I heard, or maybe it's three to five centimeters. I don't know, either one is bad. Ugh. I gotta go and uh, pick up some stuff for the wife. Oh boy, why did I take this way? Oh, this is mud and bumpy. Oh my, oh, Josh, what have you done? What have you done? Oh man, I'm glad I didn't take the semi through here. Man, that'd take forever to wash that off. Uh, this truck needed a wash anyway. I keep the semi cleaner than I keep my pickup. That's backwards to how it used to be. <laughs> the semi's cleaned every day. 
Uh, I need to start washing this thing now too, otherwise people are gonna think it's weird. Yeah, I just gotta go pick up some food and stuff, and uh, dog food as well, human food and dog food. And back on the pavement. You probably can't tell, but that was a mistake. So we're going to Sobeys right over there. Sobeys and Pet Value. Hey, you stay there, little guy. You're a little guy. I'm a bigger guy. I'm a bigger truck. A big truck has right of way. That's how it works, right? The bigger you are, the more right of way you have. I'm getting hungry. And I'm gonna go pick up food. It's always bad to go grocery shopping when you're hungry. Oh boy, you always get stuff you're not supposed to get. Way too much. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna park back here. Right beside that SUV, I think. Is that a parking spot? I think it is. I mean, it's a parking spot now. Uh, I think it's a parking spot, so therefore it is a parking spot. Oh, it is now. Right? People can still get in? Oh yeah, we're good. So we just had the too long freight to pick up today, and it took the whole day. And uh, tomorrow we don't know what the plans are yet. The plans are show up and find out. What are you guys up to today? Just working? Staying at home? What's new in your life? Let me know down below in the comments. Let me know. Tell me something. Uh, tell me something about yourselves. I want to get to know you too.